Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed on the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-up spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I am Tony Brooke Brown, your spiritual impact trainer. We are here Monday through Friday with our spiritual fitness class. We are <clears throat> going into the word, growing, changing, progressing so that we can be impacted by the word and impact the world. So welcome, welcome, welcome if this is your first time joining us. And if you're already a part of the spiritual fitness classes, welcome back to the sit-ups. And so we are continuing our study on spirit controlled lives, having a spirit controlled life, right? And we have been talking the last few sessions about being under the influence, right? Under the influence of the Holy Ghost so that the Holy Spirit is affecting our minds so we're spiritually minded so that we can be who God purposed us to be so that we can be overcomers more than conquerors. We're walking holy and upright before him. It is... um all about us being yielded and surrendered. The Bible tells us those that are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. And that's what we discussed in our last session, <clears throat> that that word led meant to be to influence affecting the mind, right? And so we talked about being under the influence of the Holy Spirit as opposed to being under the influence of uh some type of mind altering substance in the world. The Bible says, don't be drunken with wine, but be filled with the spirit. And so today I wanna to talk about our desires, our desires, our desires um, are dependent on if we are yielded to the spirit of God or to the flesh. It doesn't mean that we don't have temptation. It doesn't mean that at all. But what it does mean is the more that we are filled with the spirit of God, surrendered to the authority of the Holy Spirit and God's word, the more our desires begin to change because our mind is changed. So now we have a spiritual mind focused on different things, which causes us to have different outcomes, different desires, different actions, different deeds, different words, different relationships. So today we're going to open up in prayer, but we are going to go um, to a couple of verses just to show some contrast here. We're going to start off in Proverbs um, 15 verse 26. You can write that down. Remember, this is a video. So if at any point you need to pause it, go ahead and pause it and then pick up where you left off. I encourage notes, writing down verses of scripture so you can go back and study on your own. So you may want to have a pencil, pen available, a highlighter, your electronic device or Bible so you can go to the verses with us. But you want to make sure you write them down and take notes and go back and do your own study. And so again, Proverbs 15, 26 is where we're going to begin. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come right now and we just lift you up and praise you and honor you. We thank you, God, for this opportunity once again to study your word. We pray your Holy Spirit take over as our teacher guiding, leading, and directing as sound doctrine is going forth. Let it be that it falls on fertile ground, that it penetrates our hearts, renews our minds, that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And with all of our getting, we get understanding. Help us to be changed. Help us to be cleansed. Help us to be whole and to be holy because you're holy, that we would be pleasing in your sight, Father. And so we thank you. We praise, love, and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So again, I just want to look at a couple of verses um, to contrast what we're talking about because we're talking about being spiritually minded under the influence of the Holy Spirit because we want spirit-controlled lives. Those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. We're supposed to be children of God, followers of Christ. Our life is supposed to be different. We talked about how um, under the influence it affects our minds. So we are literally, um, our characteristics change, our minds change, our conversation change, just as it does somebody who is dealing with a mind altering substance. If they're high, if they're drunken with, you know, some type of alcoholic beverages or whatever, until it wears off, they're under the influence and they act as such. We should always be under the influence of the Holy Spirit led by the Spirit of God so that our characteristics are that of Christ, that we are walking in the word. Proverbs 15, 26 says, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. I went here because it's talking about the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. We talked about a carnal mind being enmity against God. We can't do his will when we are walking with a carnal mind. The thoughts of the wicked, those that are opposed to God, it's an abomination to God. He hates and detests. But the words of the pure 
are pleasant words. And those are the pure in heart. Remember, Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart. He tells us in Matthew chapter five, when he's talking about what we call the Beatitudes. But when he says, blessed are they, blessed are they, blessed are they. And he talks about blessed are they that are pure in heart, for they shall be called children of God. Oh, blessed are the peacemakers. They should be called the children of God. But blessed are the pure in heart. The pure in heart, those that are cleansed, those that have the word in their heart, those that are walking after the spirit of God, those that are obedient to the will and the word of God. And so as we are um, abiding in the spirit and the spirit of God is abiding in us and we're walking in the word of God, the word is washing us and cleansing us on the inside. That's how you become pure at heart. In fact, Psalms 119 talks about how can a young man, you know, be pure how can they walk, you know, the way they're supposed to walk? How can they be clean? And it talks about the word. It's the word. So when we have the word in us, we begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness. We begin to be led more and more by the spirit of God, less by the flesh. We have more of a spiritual mind, less of a carnal mind. And the more we are clothed in the word, the more we are led by the spirit, the less we're giving place to the flesh, the less we are making provision for the lust of the flesh. Um, one second here. Okay, so as we're looking at this, when it says the words of the pure are pleasant words, because Jesus says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So whatever's in the heart is what comes out. If it's evil and wickedness, evil thoughts, ungodly thoughts, then it'll be wicked words, wicked actions, ungodly, unfruitful, or bad fruit will be produced. But when we're led by the spirit, when we have the word of God in us, then the word is what's coming out. Words of hope and faith and love that we begin to act in love. We begin to forgive. We begin to walk after the spirit, which makes us conform into the image of Christ more and more like the son of God. So those that are led by the spirit are sons of God, right? Because we're becoming more and more like Christ. So when it says, when Jesus tells us, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God, which is what it tells us in Matthew 5 and 8, blessed are the pure in heart but they shall see God. Why? Because blessed the pure in heart are those that receive the word of God with gladness, let hide it in our hearts, let it take up root. And then we're led by the spirit so we can walk in that word so that we are overcomers, so that we are doing the will of God because we've been enabled and we've been empowered because we're under the influence. We have a spirit controlled life. We don't take over our own life. We're not doing what seems right in our own mind. The world doesn't control us. Our flesh doesn't control us. The enemy doesn't control us. The spirit of God is controlling us, guiding us and, and teaching us and leading us, right? So then um, let's look at, let's look at, Proverbs 12 and 5. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 5. Remember, you can pause it if you need to. It says, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Again, we're looking at that which is lined up with God's word, that which is not. The thoughts of the righteous are right. What are righteous? Those that are in right standing with God. How do we get in right standing with God? We have to abide in Christ. If we abide in Christ, then we have the spirit of God on the inside of us. Then we're led by the spirit, right? And if we're led by the spirit of God, we're sons of God. If we're, if we're led by the spirit of God, we're controlled by the spirit of God. Then our thoughts are right. Because if we are led by the spirit of God, we have a spiritual mind. So our thoughts are those that line up and align with God's will and his word and his ways. And that affects how we act. Whatever you think on, that's what you do. Whatever you're focused on, that's where you're headed. When people think on, you know, things of this world and things they desire that their flesh want and things they want to do, the more they ponder on it, the more they think on it, the more they feed it into themselves, the more they do it. They begin to to allow it to manifest in their life. If they're lusting after something, if they're greedy after something, if they, you know, have an evil, wicked desire and they play on it and they feast on it by through the TV, through the, through the radio, whatever you feed, it grows. 
and it manifests something. So the thoughts of the righteous are right, but it tells us the counsels of the wicked are deceit. So look at Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Philippians four, verse eight. Are you spirit controlled? we are looking at Philippians 4 and 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Again, this is giving us what we need to keep our mind stayed on because whatever we focus on, Whatever we feed, it grows. So if we focus on those things that line up with God's word, those things that are good, those things that are honest and true and just and pure, lovely, if we're focused on the things that the word tells us to focus on, if we keep our minds on the right things, if we set our affections on things above and not on earth, that affects us. We're spirit controlled. We are obeying the word of God, his principles, and then we receive his promises. When we walk in his commands, we are drawn near to him. He said, if you love me, you'll obey me. So he gives us his word and he gives us his spirit to enable, empower, help us and comfort us, guide us and teach us and remind us of his word so that we can fulfill it without excuse. So we are without excuse. He's given us, God has given us and provided, but we have to choose. Am I going to allow my flesh to take over or am I going to be controlled by his spirit? What this word says in the Amplified in Philippians 4 and 8 is finally believers. Whatsoever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever uh, and, and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute. If there's any excellence, if there's any anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. When we do what the word says, we are being led by the spirit of God. When you find your mind drifting off to something ungodly, unholy, sinful, something that is contrary to God's word, you begin to go to the word of God and remind yourself. I got to keep my mind on these things. I got to think on these things, the things that are honorable, worthy of respect, right, confirmed by God's word, pure, wholesome, lovely, the things that bring peace, the things that are admirable, of a good repute, those things that are excellent. The things that are of excellence are things of God, things that are holy, things that are godly, right? Things that are worthy of praise. We are continuously thinking, continuously thinking on these things. We center our mind on it because we are spirit control. You have control that you don't have to meditate and ponder on evil, wicked things. Will they come into mind? Of course. You can see something and it can trigger a thought. You can hear a song and it triggers you back to thinking about your past. You can see somebody and it reminds you of something you've been through, something you've done, something you used to like to do. But then you have to center yourself and focus because you're spirit led. And you can ask the Holy Spirit to help you. He's our helper. You can ask God to help your unbelief. You can seek the word to change and renew your mind and strengthen you and your faith. We have the tools. We have the weapons. We have the ability through being spirit controlled. So finally, let's go back to Romans chapter eight real quick. Romans chapter eight, because I want to go back and I want to look at what are your desires? right? Romans 8, 5, and 6 that we looked at the other day. Romans 8, 5, and 6, when it said, for they that are after the flesh do mind things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Again, the spiritual mind, it can be renewed, meditating on the word, you know, changed, through our surrender and submission to God, his will, his word, and his spirit, right? But in the secular dictionary, in the, in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, right? You can look up spiritually minded. 
when it says spiritually minded, his life and peace in verse six of Romans chapter eight, when you look up spiritually minded in the secular dictionary, it says mindset on spiritual things filled with holy desires and purposes. This, even in the world, they know what it means, right? What are your desires? Spiritually minded is a mindset on spiritual things filled with holy desires and purposes. If our desires are not holy, if our purposes are not holy, if they're not lined up with God's word and will, we're not spiritually minded. Now, this is the thing that we need to ponder on today, because when you look at those that are professing to be Christians in the church, and they're focused on programs and events and 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 their name on the program and being positioned on high and having celebrations in their name and wanting to 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 be acknowledged for everything but not witnessing not preaching the gospel not reaching out to those in need not you know doing the things we were called to do but connecting with the world to to fight in carnal ways but not coming together with the body of Christ to fight the spiritual battle to stand against the wiles of the devil, not going out here with the gospel so that captives can be set free. When we're not doing what God says, but we're doing what man's tradition says, when we are dressing up for church, but we're not putting on the whole armor of God, when we're mad because somebody sat in our seat, somebody sang our song that we were supposed to sing in the choir, they forgot to put our name on the program. When we are focused on the events more than going out and doing the work of the ministry, then are our desires holy, our purposes holy? Are we spiritually minded? Or are we just walking with church membership with a carnal mind? This is something to ponder today. Are you doing the will of God? Are you using your gifts for his glory? Are you desiring to see souls come to Christ? Do you have compassion for the broken? Are you reaching out to those that are hungry and thirsty and naked and strangers and in prison and, and those that are um, sick? Are you reaching out to those that don't know the Lord? Are you being a light? Are you, are you walking in forgiveness? Are you walking in love? Are you letting go of anger and wrath and malice? Because those are holy desires and holy purposes, right? And if we don't have that, then are we spirit controlled or are we controlled still by the flesh? Yes, we're in the flesh. It's a battle between the flesh and the spirit, but are we controlled? by the flesh, when we have been given the power of the Holy Spirit. Something to think about for your homework today. Go back over the verses of scripture, meditate on them. What are your desires? Are they holy or are they fleshly? What are your desires? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. Once again, we honor you and praise you. We thank you, God, for today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you that you're mighty. We thank you that we can call you Abba Father. We thank you, Lord God, that there's none like it unto you. And so, Father, as we come today, help us to be holy. Help us to be controlled by your Holy Spirit, walking in your word and in truth, moving ahead, progressing. As we're being changed, as we are growing in your word and in faith and in self-control and in patience, kindness, gentleness. Father, help us to be more like Christ today. Help us to be effective for the kingdom. And in everything, we're careful to give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. Please share this video with somebody. Hit like, subscribe to my channel if you have not yet done so beneath. And if you have subscribed to the channel, there's a bell. If you click the bell, you'll be notified when I upload videos Monday through Friday on here. And as well as being here on Monday through Friday, also at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, we're on live on Facebook and Instagram on my page, Tony Brooke Brown, and we do a word and prayer. So if you'd like to join us, please do. God bless you. I will see you on our next sit-ups. It's time for sit-ups, all sit-ups, spiritual impact training, using prayer.